Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Francis Choi. Today is the early morning of December 15, 2023. The tour in Egypt and Jordan I am leading just finished its third session yesterday. And this time I will have three days off before I start the next tour group. The last tour group, which I will be leading, is going to be started around the 17th. Therefore, I would like to spend the next few days visiting my friends and teachers in Israel and then visiting some of the archaeological excavations over there, especially the Pool of Siloam project. What is going on now, and there are many of our tour registrants in our tour groups who are very worried this time because of the current war outbreak, therefore they are telling us to cancel their tour trips. Sometimes when you cancel your trip, you can get refund of flight ticket. Very grateful to the Lord. However, some of them can't refund their flight tickets. In that case, everyone told me, Reverend Choi, can you still lead the tour as what we have planned? I see a lot of people facing such situation, so I considered such possibility to continue the tour. The fact that there were still people coming to Israel at that time, which would have been around the middle of October, However, I know that a lot of those Israel national parks have already closed. Therefore, even if you go, you can't visit those Israel national parks. I'm not going. I heard recently that it was reopened. Those Israel national parks have been reopened. However, a lot of people don't go to Israel anymore. And I heard from a friend of mine that almost 99.9% .9 of all tours to Israel have been already canceled. It's not just one travel agency in the whole country. For some tours that went ahead, they might be Indonesian because they are not afraid, or maybe they have financial support. If they don't go, they will miss out. That is why they all keep going. On top of that, 95% of the tours in Jordan were canceled. For Egypt, where I spent most time for the past month or so, there are 90% cancellations. Therefore, I know that many people will be afraid to come here. You might ask Rev Choi, are you afraid of danger? I have two children. That is my elder daughter and younger son. Of course, there is my wife. I have three grandchildren. So I also pay much attention to safety. However, I have taken the time to find out and there should be no danger. So today I really want to walk around. I have a couple of plans in my mind. While the war is happening in Israel, I'm going to walk around the city of Israel with you. We've come to Qumran. Of course, you have to visit Kirbet Qumran here. Usually we start here, watch a video here together. This video is very good. The history of past excavations in Qumran was shown in the video. If you are still interested, we will take a look at some pictures over here. They tell the story of past excavations and some artifacts were put here to let us see. After seeing all these artifacts, we can go outside and check out the whole area together. Qumran is still as before. It is always charming. On the mountain opposite Qumran, there are many caves. Here, one is called the Cave One. It was where archaeologists first discovered Dead Sea Scroll. There is no one here today. I'm the only one here, but what's inside is really precious. If you go up to this tower, you can see scenery far away. If you go in through this door, you'll enter a place called the scriptorium. The scriptorium is where those monks called the Essenes back in the days, copied the scripture on ancient scrolls. Writing desks and ink were also found here. Next to it, there's also a small room. 
There's a lot of oil lamps in this little room. You can find them there. This shows that the Essenes were very diligent copying and studying scripture. They really become good examples to us as Bible readers. Actually, they lived in this place for a long time. During their stay, many details of their daily life, including how they make potteries and how they have ritual purification and how they dried the pick dates. All can be found here. They paid particular attention to ritual purification. So there is a ritual bath here. There's more than one. This is the place where they would eat. They would sit here to eat quietly, no talking. As Chinese people would say, eat without talking or sleep without speaking. So don't talk too much while eating. We should long for a quiet moment. Here they found many pottery vessels. I believe this is where they put these bowls. While we are here, my favorite thing to look at in Qumran is located in this valley. There is a place called the Cave 4 of Qumran. This Cave 4 in Qumran can be said to be the most famous in all encyclopedias introducing the Dead Sea Scrolls because they found in this cave the Book of Isaiah Scroll. This became the most important discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Why is it called Qumran? Originally, this place had no name. But because it was found in this valley, the name of the valley is Qumran, and that's where we ended up. It's now called Khirbet of Qumran. So today, if you have the opportunity, with me or anyone else who leads you, you must come to the Khirbet of Qumran and visit the Cave 4 of Qumran here. There's really no one here today. But have you seen the other side? The Dead Sea is on the other side because these are the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is why I came to Qumran. Let's see if anyone swims in the Dead Sea. I was with a group of students at the Dead Sea in Jordan the other day. There were 20 or 30 people in the water of whom about a dozen were my students. There's one on Jordan's side, and there's one here, but those people are not tourists. It's probably local, accustomed to come. As a result, they all came to this ruin. It's worth a visit. But this time, I'm the only one who came here. No matter what, I have to come with you next time. Okay, here is the Kirbet of Qumran. There is another pool. We often come to this pool just to explain the broken cistern. If a pool has water, that water supply can sustain people's lives. But if the pool is broken, the water cannot continue to hold, resulting in a life crisis. So Ephraim is like a broken cistern. This is how the Bible describes it to remind us not to be like them. We have now finished touring Qumran. Next, I will take you to Engedi. After that, we will go together to visit Jerusalem.